Well, my clock says 3.30. I'm assuming that we can start our meeting. Okay. Um, with that, if you will join me in the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of America, of America and the Republic, the Republic which it stands under, under God, under God, indivisible, and with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Number two on our agenda is the the approval of minutes from our February 15th meeting. We'll entertain a motion we, to approve the minutes. I move that we approve the minutes from the February 15th meeting. I second it. Move and second. All in favor say aye. 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 There will tie. Carry. All right. Financial reports, Joe. Well, I would report that the uh, <clears throat> Audit of 2020 has been completed. Uh, it was done on a virtual basis this year, and that included uh, a virtual walk around for some inventory checks and other things on site. We should have the audit report next month, uh, but uh, everything uh, was indicated to be sound. And then we do have for uh, we do have uh, Lisa's updated now through February for the report of billing and some of the other financial reports. And I don't have anything unusual to note. Everything looks as expected. Um, and no big surprises. Sorry, just had to close the door to my office. <laughs> Any questions on the financial reports as far as uh, what's been presented? No, we're looking forward to seeing the audited results. Okay. Good. Well, we need a motion to approve the vouchers. They were uh, submitted by email to everyone. That's so moved. I second it. All in favor say aye. 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 And chair votes on it. Approved. All right, Joe, superintendent's report. Um, we'll start with <clears throat> operations. And you'll see for February, we were down in production by about 4.5% compared to last year and about 7.5% compared to 2019. Um, I think we're just seeing some you know, economic variability there. We don't have a big reason uh, underlying that. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, we had a pretty normal February. Uh, the year today to date average is 11.7 million gallons of water per day. Um, and that's down from 2019 where we had an average to this point in the year of 12 and a half million gallons per day. So hopefully as, as the year goes on, we'll, we'll pick up and, and uh, increase on that number. We did have an unusually mild winter in terms of water temperature. Um, we really only went into our winter operation mode, uh, maybe just for a couple, um, maybe four or five evenings was all. Normally we would be in that several months in the winter. And this is when the water temperature drops below about 32 and a half degrees, the raw water temperature. And we uh, kind of switch our production to daylight hours to reduce the chance of icing at night. Uh, but again, this year we only did that about four or five evenings was all we had to do that. So unusually mild winter. Um, we did not have any intake icing as a result this winter. Um, and I think I can safely say now we will have none uh, for <laughs> this winter. That's probably a pretty good guess, Joe. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb. And yeah, that, that again is pretty unusual. Most years we've had a few icing incidences by this time.
Um, in terms of maintenance, you can see the, the detailed log as usual, all, all variety of work from electrical to, to physical, mechanical maintenance, security issues, all kinds of things like that. Um, that's the extent for operations and, and distribution. <clears throat> we did have three water main breaks. Two were back to back on the uh, 9th, and then we had one uh, nine days later on the 18th. And as usual, those those usually occur on smaller mains, six or eight inch mains, and those were uh, two on six inch main and one on the eight inch main. And the crew was able to mobilize, and that was during a, a colder stretch, and they were able to repair those in pretty short order. They do continue to have good results with the electronic correlator that <clears throat> that the board had uh, supported the purchase of last year. So that's that's turned out to be one of those tools that they're now using all the time. Um, I think the only time it, it can be a little harder is if they're on a very busy road and there's a lot of street noise or a lot of traffic noise and the system can pick that up. Because Basically, it's listening to the sound in the ground. So they had had maybe one instance where I think they're on South Business Drive during a very busy time, and the traffic was causing some interference. But otherwise, the system's been very effective. They're very happy with it. Um, other highlights in distribution, the, the Stonebrook subdivision water main was installed by a by the developer actually, and uh, water utility staff uh, conducted the inspection of that water main, I'm sure it was going in for spec, and that now has been tested out and is mostly in service. Um, and then just a variety, it's still catching up on water main break service holes and uh, hydrant broken, valve broken, a few issues like that for February. And then finally for... Uh, so can I interrupt one second this, on, on sure. distribution? Yep. Um, the other day I noticed a hydrant laying on the ground. It's on like the frontage road off of South Business Drive. Um, where Taco Bell and uh, Burger King and that stuff in that area, is that private? It was actually on the ground, Jerry, like disconnected? Well, it was on, just laying on the ground. How far off the road? Right next to the corner, one of the, one of the uh, turns into the, um, the parking lot for one of those businesses along South Business Drive, but on the back end of those businesses. There's a road that kind of goes through from the south side, Piggly Wiggly, all the way from Wendy's actually, all the way through there. Yeah. If that's If that's private rather than public. That, that, is, pri that is private. Um, that would be mostly private if it's, you know, more than 20 feet off the edge of the, the public okay. street. Okay, yeah, okay. I mean, there was no water coming out or anything like that. It just looked like the hydrant was laying there. Yeah, they, they shouldn't be, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take a peek at it and see what's going on, but they shouldn't be leaving it. You know, it, it may have been hit and 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 came came off, but uh, it shouldn't be sitting there. So we'll, we'll take could, a look at it. It could have been buried under a snow pile too, for that matter. Yeah, that's true. Hmm, okay. Right, sorry to interrupt. I will pass that along and we'll take a look at it tomorrow. Okay. All right. Uh, customer relations and fiscal. Um, we, we did reopen the pay window and uh, we're still seeing much less activity at the window, uh, dramatically less at the window, more Dropbox payments, more uh, uh, electronic payments. Um, and we're still catching up on delinquent accounts. Uh, 
uh, absent the disconnection program, we have seen more delinquent accounts building up. Um, and that's reflected as well. Um, number of calls coming in was a little bit down, not a huge difference. Um, no complaints filed with the Public Service Commission for February. Um, <clears throat> uh, leak allowances, this is where a customer has, uh, you know, a leak going on that they're unaware of. Usually it's a toilet that's leaking. Customer doesn't know about it. We, we pick it up on meter reading and inform them. We did have one leak allowance. Customers are allowed uh, an allowance every two years under certain uh, criteria that they have to fulfill. Um, we did start a little bit with some commercial meter replacements. 35 of those were completed. Um, we do have one active uh, private uh, service uh, lateral that is leaking and we're attempting to work with the owner to get them to hire a plumber to repair that leak uh, because it is not utility uh, asset. We can't just jump in there and, and fix it, but we will be working with the customer to get that accomplished. Um, Is there a risk, Joel, with a leak like that, that you could get some backflow into our system? Um, not backflow because it's under pressure, but there there is a risk of undermining, you know, the right of way and the road, depending on what's going on. Um, so we do watch them carefully. And if we feel like there is property you know, or health hazard, we will occasionally get involved and, and physically make an emergency repair. But we, we try to avoid doing that and uh, it's pretty rare that we do that. Okay. Um, I think otherwise, uh, that's a summary for CRNF for the month of February. <laughs> Okay. Any additional comments or questions for Joe on the reports? I have kind of a bunny trail, if you don't mind. I was wondering if you were following the water problems in Texas and Oklahoma and all the mains breaking down there. Are they just burying their lines that much closer to the surface? Yeah, that's the main problem that I was aware of, Mark, that they're, you know, here we bury at least five and a half feet down and southerly you know, maybe two feet, maybe less. And yeah, those can, you know, a couple of days of freezing weather, the frost can dive through that down very quickly and start causing problems. What a crisis. Some above ground, don't they? Yeah, and some, some may have been above ground crossing bridges and such. And, you know, a big problem, the mains might be a little bit deeper, but often the, the laterals are, you know, even more shallow, maybe two feet, foot and a half. And those start freezing and, you know, customers have uh, problems immediately. Yeah, that, that was a real crisis. Yeah, it sure was. All right, moving on with our agenda, if nothing else under Joe's reports. Um, Did we need a uh, motion to accept them? Uh, please. Gary? Yes, I'm sorry, yes, we need a motion. So moved. I'll second it. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Approved. Okay. Items previously held over our raw, raw, raw water improvement project. Yeah. Update in several areas with the project. Um, first of all, we did have a meeting, utility staff, the engineering team, and uh, uh, some staff members from the Public Works Department to discuss the impact of the project on the Disc Golf uh, course at Volrath Park. And there, there's definite impact. Uh, the project will displace one of the Disc Golf holes. So we had reached out to the park uh, superintendent and uh, the Disc Golf uh, 
and a volunteer coordinator uh, just for some communications. Um, one of the things we wanted to be sure was an, an understanding about time frame because they do plan events. We didn't want any confusion that way. Um, now there's no construction anticipated for 2022, so there isn't any immediate issue coming up. Um, but we wanted to be sure there was understanding there. And then on, on the whole that is displaced, just due to the location of the RWI building, um, there's a feeling that, you know, they may need to redesign that portion of, of the course uh, to kind of squeeze in, you know, they don't want to lose a hole, which is understandable, but they need a little bit of redesign work. How, how do we fit this hole back in and, and change the other holes uh, or courses or whatever? <laughs> I'm not a disc golfer. I don't quite know the terminology, but um, the gist of it was uh, a good understanding about what the impact is going to be and a need to develop a, a plan, um, you know, laid out by a, a firm that does disc golf design to accommodate the, the impact of the project. Um, <clears throat> so that should be forthcoming. Uh, other developments, uh, we do now have in our hands 60% uh, design uh, drawings and plans, and we're reviewing those. And we'll be meeting with the engineering team uh, next week as, as follow up. Um, 60 design, that's 60% of final design. So we're getting a lot of details now. We're getting uh, you know, very far along in the process. Uh, and I would say they're on schedule to meet the June uh, deadline for final design being completed. Um, we should have an updated uh, engineer's opinion of probable construction cost by the end of March to be able to report on that figure next month. Uh, I'm hoping it's in line with what, what we've seen. I don't have any reason to think it would not be, but uh, they are updating that now with uh, those details and that'll be important to have. Um, they're also sending us a virtual reality headset so that Operations staff is going to use that and and you know do their virtual walk through the facility and get a number of people involved with that. So that's kind of kind of a nice tool. Um, the third item related to the project, uh, we do have an easement in place with the city of Sheboygan, and that was uh, recorded in 2007, very early infant stages of the project when we recognized the project would be coming and the board had requested uh, well at that point property to build the, and operate the project and the city preferred a, a permanent easement agreement uh, not a property transfer uh, so we will be building the project on that easement um, it looks like the building itself due to high water and the interest in fitting a, a service road on the east side, uh, the building is probably going to be uh, 10 to 15 feet beyond the easement on, on the west side. And we may have to request a modification to accommodate that, but it's certainly the bulk of it is within the original easement that was laid out you know, 13 years ago when we didn't have all, all the details of what the project size would be and, and the precise location. <clears throat> um, and then the other um, update, uh, one of the other uh, approvals we need is from the, the Public Service Commission. We need a so-called construction authorization on the project due to its size and financial impact and I've begun working on that document. It's a pretty lengthy, probably end up being a 20 page part of the project addressing all of their questions and, and <clears throat> concerns about a project of this magnitude and, and basically a lot of justification. So we now have a rough draft of that document. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, 
pending more of the 60% details uh, coming out, we'll update that once more. And then I would anticipate submitting that uh, at the 60% design point, which PSC says is allowable uh, in order to get that process moving because that probably going to be a nine month process with them. And I want that to be going in parallel as we apply for the safe drinking water loan and, and everything else is moving forward. So I would anticipate in the next month being uh, ready to submit that to the PSC. And again, we've met with them at least uh, two times in person and and talked in detail about the project. So they know a lot about it. They know it's coming. They've anticipated some uh, questions and, and uh, communicated with us very, very well on the project so far. Um, so the next month we'll have more, more information, more details, and, and everything is, is uh, moving along. Uh, the only other item I should mention, we've talked about the FEMA BRIC grants. We did apply for one on the shoreline protection system for the project. Not going to know about that until probably late summer. Uh, there's been some consideration, maybe we should pl apply for the whole project. And we're still having discussion with the state uh, uh, division of emergency management that, that is kind of the state uh, manager of FEMA BRIC as to whether the whole project is really going to fit the criterion or not. There, there's a benefit analysis. And if your numbers and that don't come out high enough, there's no point in, go in continuing forward. Um, so they've kind of thrown up some red flags because FEMA BRIC is intended to mitigate natural disaster impact on infrastructure, public projects. And shoreline protection falls under the realm of um, high water and flooding, um, both of those. Uh, the overall project itself would only fall under possibly flooding uh, because our current low lift pump station is, is close to lake level and could in theory flood. But flooding has a very a higher standard to make it through their benefit analysis. So they, they've kind of started to indicate that they're, they're not sure the whole project is even going to make it through the analysis uh, to move beyond that. So we're still evaluating that. And I'm hopeful within the next month or two that, that we'll have a, a better determination. I, I don't want to spend time on FEMA brick for the whole project. First of all, if it's not even passing the benefit analysis. And, and second of all, I, I kind of want to know that as soon as we can, because it does impact uh, when the project construction could begin. Um, so we're trying to resolve that part of the financing question. If we could get a 75% grant, obviously that'd be a wonderful thing. You know, there, there's a, a limited chance of that happening and, and possibly we might not even qualify to even apply. So I'm still trying to work with Lisa and others and, and resolve that question. Anything else? Any questions on that, Mark? No, sir. Tom? No, I'm good. All right. Thanks for the report, Joe. Um, on to number five, items for discussion, possible action. First, we've got approval of the bid on Georgia Avenue Water Main Project. Yes, here we have a, a, a bid tabulation. Um, due to a number of factors, we uh, teamed with the Public Works Department on their project in, in this instance, which we do, you know, not infrequently. If they're digging up a street and bidding out a, a lot of other work, it makes sense normally for us to join with them. Uh, so we did in this case as well, and the low bidder was, of the overall project was Fenton, and you can see the figures for the water main portion. And those did come in uh, under our engineer's 
estimate. You know, one risk is that when we bid out under a larger contract, that maybe the low bid for the whole contract isn't the low bid for our portion of the contract. But in this case, it came out uh, uh, as a reasonable on, on the water main, and we would certainly recommend moving forward with it. Do you recall what the budget was, Joe? It was about 850000 if not a little more, maybe eight seventy five. Good. Any questions or comments? That was my big question. Okay. No, I'm good. All right. With that, we need a motion to approve the $788,039, the $39, yeah, $39 um, for the project. So moved. I'll I will second, second it. That. Uh -huh. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 The chair votes aye. Motion carried. Next, number 5.2, approval on bid of George Emil Lead service line replacements. Yes, in addition to the water main, one of the reasons we wanted to do the project was uh, there are a lot of old lead service lines in that stretch of uh, the city, and uh, it provides us a good opportunity to replace an old main and replace a number of old lead service lines at the same time. Um, due to, uh, in this case, receiving funding uh, from the DNR grant program for lead service line replacements, uh, we have to bid out the lead service line replacements separate from the water main work. This is due to of some federal legal requirements um, that help clarify costs for just the lead service line uh, grant projects. So anyway, what you have here is a bid for the lead service line replacements on the same project. The, the prior bid was for the water main replacement. Um, so in this case, we spec'd out the um, lead service line replacements. I believe there are about uh, 65 to 70 uh, homes with lead service lines that we would be replacing. And in this case, we were happy to receive, uh, I believe it was it's five bids um, for that portion of the work. And we have a low uh, responsive bid from <clears throat> a new company for us, Elfson Excavating out of Reedsville came in low and they came in at a, um, a bit under our local firms that have done uh, projects like this in the past. So we feel it's a, it is a responsive bid and they're, they're able to do the work. Um, and we would recommend accepting their proposal. Hmm. Do we have any uh, testimonials from other folks that have worked with them? Uh, we have their, their bidder's proof, which li lists other projects sim similar nature that they have done, you know, type of equipment that they have. Um, you know, they, they're they certainly uh, capable of doing this work. Is there is there a way for us to check with a couple of those other projects just to make sure or you feel that what, what the information we have is sufficient? Um, I think under a publicly uh, bid project, um, we would need very strong reason to, to deny a low cost bid that's responsive. Okay. Um, so I'm not sure that we'd be able to, you know, so to speak, have, have reference checks on them. Uh, if they were on the state debarred list, that would certainly be disqualifying. Hmm. Um, we could certainly ask for some information, contacts with past clients and, and kind of get a sense of maybe areas to, to uh, uh, you know, watch out for, so to speak, if, in working with them. But I, I don't really think we could uh, comply with state bidding law and, and do a reference check like that. Okay. okay. 
All right. So we're looking at uh, approving that bid for Elson excavating out of Reedsville. I will move to approve. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Fair votes aye. Motion carried. Next, Joe. Hmm. I hit on that. Uh, you said we have two two projects as part of that, or did I misunderstand? That uh, that was it for Georgia Avenue. Okay. All right. So 5.3 approval for bid on hydrant painting for 2021. Yes, so each year we put out an annual uh, bid for, <clears throat> excuse me, <coughs> uh, blasting hydrants down to bare metal, priming and, and painting them. This year we'd like to do uh, 200 hydrants. We, we were delayed due to COVID last year. So we asked, asked for an updated price uh, and, and our vendor held the same price as last year. So we're simply <clears throat> requesting to continue with work that was delayed and just wanted to be clear that it, it is a new year and they had bid it last year, but they're holding their price and we'd like to continue it for 2021. Does this get us back on track with the hydrant maintenance? Uh, it does, yes. Excellent. All right, any further discussion? Not for me. If nope. not, we'll accept the motion to approve uh, from Davies. For the so moved. Is there a second? I will second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Fair votes aye, motion carried. All right, the engineering design on Indiana and the water main project, number 5.4. Yes, so the, the DOT is doing a rebuild on <clears throat> a State Highway, um, uh, the Indiana Avenue uh, State Highway portion in the city. I forget what state highway number that, that is, 28 maybe, but whatever it is. DOT is doing a project um, and it's uh, encompassing South 24th Street to South Taylor Drive is the relevant portion for us. Um, they're doing road reconstruction entirely in that section. We have a, a very small old water main there, eight inch water main uh, that used to be the sole supply to the UW campus. So if you imagine that water main coming down Indiana Avenue, crossing Taylor Drive, and then going to Lutheran High and the campus area, that was the sole feeder for that area for many, many years. Um, it's old main, it's very deep. I think portions of it there are, are 15 feet or possibly a little deeper than that. Uh, what we'd like to do is replace that and start to build up a better corridor, um, eliminate that very deep water main, which is a safety hazard, and start to uh, uh, kind of strengthen our water distribution in that area now that we have the hospital. And we still have the UW campus, which you know possibly will be growing uh, the hospital and the campus are fed from the north as well. I'm sorry, from the south as well. But there isn't much uh, networking or backbone, so to speak. So this Indiana Avenue really serves as the backbone to that area. And we do envision in the future more water transmission along South Taylor Drive in that area, you know, possibly linking to the Erie Avenue water reservoirs and Taylor Hill. So it, it, it is an important corridor that's just been undeveloped uh, with water main. Um, but the extent of what we would like to do is replace from 24th Street to Taylor Drive, 
Uh, unfortunately, as this is a DOT project, we can't just jump in with our engineering department and comply with, with their specs and, and uh, drawing details. We, we don't have the means to do that, and nor do they want individual utilities doing that. <clears throat> so the consulting engineer on the project is a strand and they are certainly a reputable Wisconsin civil engineering company. Uh, so we asked Strand for a quote to do the water main design in compliance with DOT specs and, and all of their criterion, working closely with us and, and you know reducing a lot of their work because we know what we want in that area. They don't have to start from scratch. <clears throat> what the supervisor McMillan was able to uh, see from them was a proposal to do that design work and, and make it comply with DOT bidding requirements. We do have a, an hourly charge out rate not to exceed $25,000. I think it can come in somewhat under that figure, but there is, you know, it is a significant stretch of water main to design and lay out and take some time, certainly. Are we envisioning what, what size we are envisioning putting in there? Uh, probably 12 inch. 12, okay. And at some point, will something have to run to the, the, the Kohler Arts Preserve or anything out there? Um, we do have a water main serving the Art Preserve. We had installed a river crossing a couple of years ago from, from the Lutheran High area, but it also is is served by this eight inch kind of substandard main and in, in Indiana Avenue. Okay. But yeah, you're right, Jerry. We, we have a 12 inch, uh, basically brand new river crossing right there that is uh, feeding the art center and whatever else might come in that area. Okay. Any further comments or questions for Joe? Sounds like an exciting project. Yep. Yeah. Hearing no comments, we'll accept the motion to approve uh, the Strand and Associates on the water main project. So moved. I'll second it. Moved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Fair votes aye. Carried. Number 5.5, .5, approval of water meters. <clears throat> so with the uh... Uh, startup of the disconnection program in mid-April, we're starting to think uh, about returning to um, our water meter change-out program. We're required to change water meters out per PSC specs, and that program has been on hold. Uh, we now uh, want to start that up when we feel it's safe to do so here and I think that will be in the in the very near future uh, but we do want to lay in some stock of our standard uh, M25 badger meters uh, a few larger commercial three inch meters uh, and such shown on the requisition And these are just going to be replaced on an as-needed basis. Yeah, that's right. Most of the meters were running 20 years now. Okay. All right, I will make a motion to approve uh, purchase of meters from Badger Meter. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. Aye. Fair votes aye. Carried. Moving on the agenda, nothing under personnel. I want to compliment everybody on wearing the water color today. Dark blue, so. <laughs> anyway. Uh, we're, making, we're making an assumption, Tom. Yeah, we're making yeah. an assumption, Tom. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, next meeting scheduled for April 19th. 
Does that work for everyone else? Yes. I'm good. Are you still going to be around? Yep, I'm good. Yep. Not going on vacation? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see everybody on the 19th of April. Okay. Um, so good. For those of you who don't have the second shot, enjoy. How, how do we do on uh, water utility personnel now could get shots, correct, Joe? Um, if they have direct frontline contact with the public and are unable to socially distance, yes, they're in 1B. Okay. All right. All right. With that, I uh, will accept a motion to adjourn our meeting. That's all moved. I'll second it. I moved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 And the chair votes aye. Enjoy the snow tonight. After that, <laughs> that's the last one. So. I hope so. We all hope. We all hope. Joe, I got to tell you, I do like this board docs process. I can look at the documents here on my iPad. Yep. This works well. Yeah, Good. I've got two monitors, so I'm looking at them on one monitor and looking at you guys on the other. So. <laughs> I'm not sure which is more exciting. <laughs> well, just so you're not checking the baseball scores on a, on a third monitor there somewhere, Jerry. Oh, well, 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 the season hasn't started yet. So. Okay. All right. All right. Have a good day. The rest of it, anyway, guys. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye.